Alright, so it's time to get some enemies into our game. First thing you're going to need is a player who's able to move around and has the jump ability. You're going to want to make sure that your player has the usual collider of some sort. At that point, you're going to be ready to get your enemy set up. So first thing we're going to do is over in our hierarchy, we're actually going to create a empty game object. And I'm going to call this one baby dragon. And we're going to add our sprite onto that. And I'm going to make it a child of that for the empty one. Later on, it's going to become apparent why we're making it a child instead of just creating one. But it's generally good practice to make your sprite a child of the actual game object so that you don't run into conflicts with some of the scripting we'll be doing later on. All right, at this point, we want to make it so that our enemy is capable of interacting with the player and dealing some damage. So first thing we're going to do, I'm going to click right onto the sprite of my dragon, and I'm going to add a Capsule Collider 2D. I'm going to need to expand that and do a little bit of editing. Now because of the shape of my player, I'm going to change mine to a horizontal collider. That'll allow me to get a nicer shape here. And as usual, I don't make my collider quite fully the size of the character so that you don't get damaged by like touching its nose or something like that. One optional thing that you can add here is a rigid body. I really like the way that the monsters interact with my player when they bounce off of him um, in a natural physics based way. So I like to put one on. A word of caution though, make sure that you do not put the rigid body on the sprite because then what will happen is when you hit it, it will actually bounce and separate from the parent object. Instead, you wanna make sure that your rigid body is applied to the parent object. Once you add your rigid body, don't forget to freeze the Z rotation. That'll keep the monster from toppling head over heels when you bump into him. All right, at this point, we're ready to do some scripting. So first thing we're gonna need is you're gonna to have to create a player health script. All right, so there's a few things that we're gonna to wanna to do inside of here. The first is gonna to be to create some variables that can help us to keep track of our health. So I'm gonna start by making a public integer called max health. I'll set mine to 10. And because it's public though, we can change this at any time in Unity. I'm also gonna create another public integer that's just going to be health. And that's just gonna be keep track of where our health is currently at as we play the game. In our start, function here. I'm just going to make it so that when the game begins, our health is set to our max health so that we begin the game with full power. I don't actually need anything in our update for now. So I'm just going to get rid of that one altogether. And we're going to create a brand new one. I'm going to make this a public void function. And we're going to call this one take damage. And you're going to put brackets after that and then curly brackets. And this is going to be a function that is actually called by our enemy. So when we hit the enemy, it will call up this function in order to make our player take some damage. So we're actually gonna go inside of these brackets here and we're gonna create a variable. This one's gonna be an integer, so a number, and we'll call this one damage. So now, anytime our enemy hits us, depending on how much damage they deal, they will call up this function here and send over a value as to how much damage they're gonna deal. What we want to happen at that point is we want our health to subtract, so we put minus equals, the damage value sent over from the other script. Now we're almost set at this point. This will make it so that we can take damage. The only thing we still need to do though is make it so that if we actually get to zero or lower, we die. So I'm gonna make an if statement here, and this will just check to see if health is less than or equal to zero. We'll do a curly brackets and we're just gonna destroy the player. Destroy game object, semicolon. All right, so back in Unity, we can click on our player and add the player health script. Now what we just need to do is make it so that our enemy is actually capable of dealing damage to us. So we're gonna put this on the sprite along with the capsule collider and rigid body. We're actually just gonna call this one monster damage. Now the beauty of this script is that we'll be able to use this on any monsters that we put in the game. We'll just have to make some little minor uh, changes within Unity so that they can deal different amounts of damage. And what we're going to start with is just up the top here, we're going to make a public integer called damage. We're not going to set that here, we'll set that in Unity because we'll want it to be different depending on which monster we're putting the script onto. Another thing we're going to want to do here is we want this script to be capable of talking to our player health script. And so we're gonna make a reference to it. So we're gonna go public, 
player health, which is the name of our other script. And we'll also use the name player health for it with just a lowercase p. Now at this point, we're not going to need anything in our start or update function. So I'm just gonna take them out altogether. And what we do want though, is that when the monster is collided with by the player, we want him to call up that take damage function within the player's health. So we're gonna make a on collision enter 2D. And what we want to happen is whenever something collides with this monster, we want it to check to see if it was the player. So we're gonna go if collision, meaning the thing that just hit it, dot game object dot tag is player. And we'll set that tag in just a moment, curly bracket. So if it collides with the player, we want it to call up. We want it to look inside of the player health script. We'll put a dot to go inside of it. And now we want to call up that take damage function that we created in player health. If I go back to that script, you'll remember that we called it take damage. And then in the brackets, we just put however much damage we want dealt. So we'll do take damage. And then in brackets, we're going to put the word damage. And that will substitute whatever variable we set. All right, at this point, we want to take our monster damage script and put it onto the monster. We want to pick a value of how much damage we're going to deal. In this case, I'm going to do two damage. And then we just need to let this script know where the player health script can be found. And that's of course on our player. So I'm gonna grab wizard boy and drag him into here. And you'll notice that it automatically finds his player health script. The only thing left is that we need to make sure that our player is actually tagged as the player. If not, when the collision happens, the monster won't recognize it's being hit by the player. Now you'll notice that I've already tagged mine, but what you'll need to do, and actually players should be available automatically and you can just um, click it in your tags. If for some reason it's not there though, you can click add tag, hit the plus button, and then add whatever tag you need. All right, at this point, we should be ready to give this a shot. Now, if I click on my player, you'll notice that right off the bat, my health is set to whatever my max health is, which in this case is 10. And if I come over here and bump into the monster, you'll notice my health just went down by two. Same if I were to jump on top of him, you'll notice he bounces down, which is kind of fun with the rigid body but my player's been damaged yet again. All right, you've got a monster that can deal damage and a player who can keep track of that damage. Go ahead and try this for yourself.